to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. This month's theme is Skulking Around, where we'll focus on skull radiographs. In this series, we have a VD, a lateral, and an open jaw VD view. In the latter, they place the detector in the mouth to the commissures and focus on either the nasal cavity or the mandible. In this case, the focus is the nasal cavity. This view reduces the superimposition of other bones, including specifically the mandible. Today's example is a nine and a half year old male neutered English Springer Spaniel with nasal deformation that has regions that are both firm and soft. He has been sniffling and sneezing a lot. Symptoms have progressed after a course of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and antibiotics. There is now epistaxis. The mandibular lymph nodes are very slightly enlarged on physical exam. What we observe in these radiographs is that there is markedly increased opacity in the right nasal cavity with poor distinction of the nasal turbinates in comparison to a more normal left side. The nasal septum is mildly deviated to the left and is poorly defined or possibly lytic in the mid aspect. There is a one centimeter well-defined, smoothly marginated, corticated, mineral opaque structure in the rostral, rostral aspect of the right nasal cavity. Several teeth are missing, tooth 105, 106, and 108. There is moderate expansion of the periapical or periodontal space surrounding both tooth 104 and 107. On the lateral view, we observe irregularly marginated lysis of the rostral maxilla. If this was along midline, we would consider the nasal bone. Dorsal to this change and consistent with the described soft tissue swelling, there is a little bit of a soft tissue bulge and deformation. The cribriform plate is well defined and considered normal. Our conclusions for this patient are an aggressive mass lesion of the right nasal passage with lysis of the maxilla and nasal septum. There is additionally cortical expansion of the periapical spaces of teeth 104 and 107. A mass lesion present within the right nasal passage is prioritized However, we cannot fully describe the extent on radiographs alone. Computed tomography can be excessively useful as it will help us define the degree of lysis as well as the extent of the mass. A neoplastic process is our primary differential and includes nasal adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. A tooth root abscess arising from tooth 104 with secondary osteomyelitis is considered less likely given that the more rostral location of the soft tissue opacity in the nasal cavity. Be sure to view the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.